Well, we begin this news hour in Pakistan, where rallies are getting underway in support of former Prime Minister Imran Khan, who was wounded in a gun attack on Thursday. Protests have been held in several parts of the country against what Khan supporters say was an attempt to assassinate him. Well, Khan's party is accusing Prime Minister Shabazz Sharif, his interior minister, and a senior army officer of plotting the shooting at a rally in Punjab province. The government denies the allegations. Police say they've arrested a man who says that he shot the cricketer-turned-politician to stop him from, quote, misleading people. Well, for more, let's bring in Kamal Haider. He's in Islamabad for us. Kamal, we're seeing people now take to the streets. Tension is clearly building there. Absolutely. I'm at a key intersection bridge which connects Rawalpindi with Islamabad. This is also a very famous venue for protest. As you can see behind me, um, hundreds of policemen armed with shotguns, tear gas shells are waiting for the protesters to arrive at this key bridge. There are going to be protests in four different places in Islamabad itself. There are going to be protests in the Punjab province, in Sindh province, and in the Khyber Pukhtunkhwa province. There have been overnight protests in all key cities of Pakistan. And of course, the Tariq Saf has said that these protests will now be countrywide until the demands are met. The key dem demands have always been a fresh election, the announcement of that date. The government, are, however, sticking to its gun, saying that's not going to happen before October 23. So across Pakistan, people are angered by what happened yesterday. They do not believe the version provided by the government that this was a lone wolf. And there are serious question marks as to how uh, that man's video came out within 15 minutes of the attack on Imran Khan. The belief here is, and according to leading experts, that there was more than one assassin who was involved, including an assault rifle, possibly a Kalashnikov, and that was the automatic fire heard in the video just moments before um, we found out that he had been hit. Now, of course, these tensions are high. Pakistan, Tariq and Saf, Imran Khan uh, is holding a meeting of his party chiefs in Lahore, where he's at a hospital, the Shokat Khanam Hospital, and is also going to address a press conference at 11 GMT, which is going to be less than an hour from now. Uh, Kamal, you talk about different versions there and what people believe, what they don't. Where are we at with working out exactly what happened? Well, it is quite certain now that more than one weapon was used and that the attacker who was caught was a decoy because it diverted attention towards that one person, then his confession coming out. Uh, although the legal procedure dictates that the man is first interrogated, proper investigations are done uh, before any uh, details are released. But here, state television brought him on air uh, minutes after that attack, despite the fact that state TV and Pakistan Electronic Media Authority has put a strict clampdown on local media outfits not to report on Imran Khan's uh, speeches and his rally. He, of course, has been marching towards Islamabad. Uh, that was the seventh day yesterday when he was attacked. And he, of course, is determined to continue with that march. But this is now much bigger than just the GT road where the marchers are coming from on Islamabad. This is now going to be a nationwide protest. And it will be important to see what kind of strategy Imran Khan and his party comes out with after that announcement at 11 GMT. Indeed, we'll be keeping an eye on that. Kamal Haider there on the ground for us in Islamabad. Thank you, Kamal.